Do you work with lambdas and want to know the difference between writing an async lambda and writing a lambda with callbacks? In this video, that is exactly what we're going to look into. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. If you like these kind of videos and you haven't subscribed already, make sure to su subscribe down in the bottom corner so that you get updated every time I release one of these new videos. In this video, we're going to be comparing the functionality of async Lambda functions in Node.js and functions that use callbacks and one of the main differences that you can find and that is with how they finish. What we're going to do is look at some code examples and try out three different examples involving slightly different variations on Lambda code. We'll see how they work and compare the differences. To demonstrate how this works, I've set up a serverless project with three handlers. First, we have an async handler, which calls the long running task and then returns a 200. Second, we have the callback handler. And this again calls the long running task and then returns a callback with a 200. Finally, we have a callback with a stack complete event loop equals false. And this again, it calls the long running task and it returns a callback with a 200. But at the start, we've set context dot callback waits for empty event loop equals false. And when I've deployed this, I've got three new endpoints, one for each of these handlers. So now we can go into Postman and see how they act. First, we've got the async function. And if I hit send, I get a response in 152 milliseconds, which is really quick. If I do multiple responses, this actually speeds up as the cold start has already happened. If you want to learn more about cold starts, you can see my video on cold starts up in the top of the corner of the page right now. So as we can see, this is consistently underneath 60, uh, underneath 100 milliseconds. If we now go across to our callback handler, when we post this request, we can see that it is taking much longer. So here it is taken 5.41 seconds, send it again. And with the cold start, it should drop down to just above five seconds. And that is exactly what we see. So now what we can do is test our last endpoint. And when we send this, it comes back in 0.6 seconds and then under a tenth of a second. So what is happening? If we go into the code and look at the async event, the way that async works is when we are returning this function, because it is async, that is at the point at which it returns. So that is the point at which we are completing this handler. With a callback on the other hand, when the handler is started, it creates a call stack in JavaScript and it's going to go through here. And when it gets to the long running task, it's going to add that task to the call stack. That means that it is in line to be processed once it is completed. And then it moves on to this callback. This callback fires, but because the long running task is still going and is still in the JavaScript stack, then this callback can't actually complete. Therefore, the handler is still waiting for this to have completed. In the final example, where we set this 
callback waits for empty event loop equals false, it does exactly the same as what happens in the normal callback version. But when this callback is called, it doesn't matter if there is anything waiting in the call stack. So this long running task doesn't matter at all and is abandoned. This means that it, your function returns as soon as callback is called, instead of waiting for every single line of code inside this handler to have finished running before it can execute. In this video, we have looked at three different ways to write Lambda code. The first one is the async way. And with this, as soon as you return at the end of your function, the execution ends. This is great as if you've done a fire and forget kind of asynchronous request earlier in your code, then the request will have been made, but you don't have to wait for the response. If you've used callbacks, which was our second example, then when we've made that asynchronous request, that is still in the JavaScript call stack. This means that the Lambda code won't actually trigger your callback until everything in that stack has completed. If you're hitting external APIs to say update a file and you don't need to know any response, then this is really frustrating and it can actually cause your whole Lambda to time out. This can cause massive bugs as you can have console logs later on where you're like, it looks as if everything has succeeded, but then it still times out. Back when I used to write callback lambdas, I had this issue a lot and found it really frustrating. If you are stuck having to use callbacks, then there are third method where we can declare in the context that we don't wait for the JS call stack to complete. This has a similar effect to using an async Lambda function. When it, that callback is called, we don't need to wait for everything in the JS stack to complete before returning the function. So if you found this video useful, have learned something that you didn't know before, then make sure to give it a like as it really helps me and the YouTube channel by sharing it out to more people just like yourselves. And if you haven't done already, please make sure to subscribe down here and turn on the bell notification so that you get notified next time I release a video.